One of the most popular cake box mixes is chocolate. And no surprises, because it's probably the most popular cake in the world. But instead of making ordinary cake today, I'm going to turn it into a frozen Rocky Road bar. These Rocky Road bars take cake box mix to an entirely new level. They're decadently delicious and packed with the very best of treats. To make them, you're going to need a box of chocolate cake mix, eggs, strong coffee, and some smooth peanut butter. Then for the ice cream, you're going to need some vanilla ice cream, chocolate coated peanuts, chocolate biscuits, dark chocolate, and some more smooth peanut butter. I suppose you think that cake box mixes are like a new thing, you know, they do feel sort of, I don't know, vaguely modern. But actually they were invented way back in the 30s. They didn't really take off initially, mostly because you really had to do absolutely nothing. You just sort of threw it in and... I think mixed it with some water or something and then off you went rejoicing. Okay, so I'm going to use half of the mixture. I've got half the chocolate cake, two eggs, only use three, half a cup of oil. Traditionally, if you were using the whole bag of, of mix, you'd use a whole cup of oil. Hot, hot coffee, make it quite strong. You want loads and loads of flavour. And then let's just... You don't need an electric beater, just a bit of good sort of wrist action will do. Now, I'm going to, because it's a rocky road, I'm obviously not making an ordinary cake. It's like a flat bar, really. Just got some greaseproof paper, and then just toss that. It looks so velvety and marvellous. So what you really want to do, just get rid of this, is just scrape out what you can. Again, leaving a little bit for the folk who might like the odd lick of the bowl. Spread it as evenly as you can. I mean, don't get too stressed out. At the end of the day, you're going to cut this into bars, so you know, it's not the end of the world. And then I want to pop it in the oven for 20, 25 minutes, about 180. Pop that in there. Let's just get rid of that. And then, because it's television and I need to make one before, here it is. The reason we made one before is because it does need to be cold. Now, the deliciousness over here is that you're going to spread this, the liberal quantity of smooth peanut butter. If you suffer from nut allergies of any kind, you can easily use a, a chocolate spread, white or dark chocolate, with pleasure. I mean, it's, I just quite like peanut chocolate combo. Now, just put that aside, let it sit there gently and happily. I'm gonna get some ice cream. I'm gonna use vanilla ice cream, but quite honestly, you can use toffee ice cream, you can use coffee ice cream, chocolate ice cream, whatever you like. Just want it, yeah, just want it to get a little bit soft, so it makes it easier to, to sort of bash away and, and soften. Right, so in order to make a rocky road, clearly you need some rocky goodies. I've got some dark chocolate, some chocolate biscuits, and some chocolate peanuts. So we're back on the sort of chocolate peanut affair again. Good flavours. I'm just going to have to chop these up as best you can. Now you don't want them to be sort of crumbs, but you don't want them to be too big either. So you could add honeycomb, you could add marshmallows, you could add jelly tots. Really is kind of whatever you like. You're just trying to get a rocky effect. Um, you know, just chocolate nuts if that's how you feel. White chocolate is also nice if you feel that way inclined. And then. I do love a chocolate nut. I'm not hugely mad about chocolate generally, but chocolate nuts are something that I'm very partial to. No one can say that you're not putting a bit of extra effort in to your cake mix with all this hoeing and mowing and chopping. Right, that'll be absolutely fine. These you can keep for pat course. Excellent. I'm going to need a bowl to mix the ice cream in. Just grab that. Hopefully it's sort of softish. Yeah. So you don't need the whole thing. I mean, sort of three quarters of this will be fine. So I'm gonna, I think that looks kind of fine to me. I'm just gonna pop this back in the freezer. So that we don't waste anything. Fantastic. So give it a good soften. Okay. And this really does help, you know, otherwise you might be there all day and get tennis elbow. Just toss that all in, don't waste any of the lovely little crumbs because they'll all taste great at the end of the day. Now before I mix all that together, let me just actually, now this is not strictly necessary, but a bit of melted peanut butter just on the top. 
goes a long way in deliciousness. So I'm just going to toss it into here. You just want to warm it slightly, otherwise you won't be able to pour it, will you? And if you don't want to do this because you feel it's a bridge too far, then don't. Mix it quite well so you you know there's everything's kind of evenly distributed. Let's check on the peanut butter here. Yeah, that's perfect. So you just want to heat it so that it sort of gets like sort of pouring consistency. If you go over that, it'll start to kind of seize it like chocolate, and then just add some some just some oil, sunflower oil, canola oil, whatever, not olive oil. But there we go, that's perfect. Right. So now just bung this on top in any old fashioned. Oh, this is, I mean, this is, not only is it just heavenly for anyone to eat, but it's a really great kid's birthday cake. Yum, yum. That's it. Couldn't resist. Mm. Yeah. Marvelous, let's feel that. What I'll do is just go from here. You could do this as liberally or as frugally as you like, but while we're at it, just a little bit of that putt course I mentioned earlier. Might not go in this. I mean, in for a penny, in for a pound. And then pop it into the freezer. It needs to sort of set solidly so that you can cut it into bars. And then all you have to do is tuck in. Not only do these Rocky Road bars look divine, they're so easy to make, they taste like heaven, and they're perfect for summer entertaining. Yay! Next, we're turning the bog standard vanilla cake mix into a raspberry and apple crumble slice. On the ingredients list is a box of vanilla cake mix, some apples and raspberries, a bit of berry jam, some butter, some lemon juice, and some lemon rind. This is a box of sort of 500 grams of vanilla cake mix. I'm going to put about a third of it aside because that's going to become the crumble. And then just toss two thirds into a bigger bowl because that's where we're actually going to make the batter. Then we've got some oil. Now do remember to adjust your recipe because this is two thirds of the batter, not the whole amount. Some milk and one egg as opposed to two. So it's all terribly simple and nothing's sort of deviated from the original plan. Just give it a good sort of beat. It's quite sort of solid, so you need some rest action. There we go. Just make sure you've got all the good bits. And then literally just tip it into your, this is a small kind of pan, it's 20 by 20. So, because now you're making a slice again. We've got quite carried away on the slice thing. I mean, this is easy to sort of do 12 slices. So unless you're greedy, that's 12 people. Well, maybe not at everybody's home, admittedly. But certainly eight. And then just scrape out the rest. There we go, that'll do. So I just sort of whiz it along, just shake it in, shake it into shape, just so it fills in the corner. Right, now we're going to make the sort of topping bit. So I'm gonna use some peeled and sort of cubed apple. I've got some raspberries they're beautiful. And then I think you do need with this sort of sweet vanilla cake a little bit of acidity. So some grated lemon peel and some, some lemon juice. Again, you could use a bit of orange here if you weren't entirely certain. It could be for to be a little liberal. And a sort of squeeze of lemon just to moisten things up. And I've got berry jam. If you wanted to use, I don't know, fig jam, even marmalade a couple of tablespoons of that. This is real sort of like a cross between, a, I don't know, a crumble, a cobbler, and a, it's a real mixture of things. And it makes a delicious slice, but it also just makes a lovely pudding. So I'll leave that up to you to decide what you want. Just spoon this sort of on top. And if you want to sort of bring the changes and add more fruit or different fruit, that really, I mean, you can make this according to the season. Don't miss the jammy bits. Now we're gonna make the crumble part, which is why we kept the third of the um, vanilla mix aside. What you're going to do is just toss in some butter just, and you're gonna rub this in so that you make crumbs. Pull your sleeves up, just gently incorporating the mixture into the batter. Do it lightly with your fingertips until you get sort of well, a crumble, I suppose. And look, if things get a little bit sort of stuck together, just add a little bit of extra cake mix or even just a little bit of flour is absolutely fine. Because it does need to, well, be 
crumbly, otherwise you're gonna have a bit of trouble. If you really get a sort of solid kind of dough, what you could do is just grate it with a coarse grater. Roll it into a ball and then grate it over the top. That's it. Now, I mean, I must say, dead easy, rather delicious. And off we go, sort of 25 minutes or so in the oven, 180. Voila! And when that comes out, you can either have it warm with ice cream as a pudding, or cool it and slice it. I just love this recipe. Serve it either as a warming winter dessert or as a simple, easy summer slice. Always a winner.